Okay, so today we are going to focus on putting the rectifier in and the extra coil. Um, let's open this up real quick. Just one single wire, it'll go in there, and then this will get uh, connected to the other one. So uh, let's rip this off real quick. Got a uh, 24 millimeter. just a little bit. This is going to fit on there just like that, and then uh, we'll have to wire this up around through somehow or another like that. Um, I'm gonna go find some more bolts. Uh, hopefully, I got some back there. I'll be back. All right, so I got it installed. Um, I did have to go buy two bolts and they didn't have 8 millimeter. these are just uh, 10 millimeter. those are the original ones. I do like that one but uh, they didn't have it, it was just a 10 millimeter head. This is a M6 1 by 30 and so uh, I think this was like two bucks or something like that for four. So I just switched out those two for the four pack. So they're all the same head size. Um, I am going to wrap this around. So as you can see, I went behind the coil and it'll go around this uh, this little post here and it'll come up and out so there's a cover that goes over this take the cover off pull this little grommet out and there's actually two holes already in there so let me go ahead and feed that wire in there and I'll put that on there Now that I have that installed, we'll go ahead and put on the, the flywheel and all that good stuff and put that cover on because we're pretty much done inside of here. Uh, you know me, I'm going to put some anti-seize on this. Didn't have a hard time pulling it off, that's because there's no rust or anything, so we'll uh, make sure we put some anti-seize on there and I'll get back with you. Alright, here's where we're at. Got the fuel pump installed had the rectifier. I'm just going to put it up here. I could have put it right there, but I kind of wanted to keep it away from the engine heat as much as possible, so that's what I did. Okay, so see how well you can see this. Uh, here's the two wires coming out. Um, this is the second one that we added. Okay. And this wire right here goes to here. You can see it's brown. Here is the factory. I don't know if it's a rectifier or what, but basically it changes it from uh, AC current to DC. And then this white wire should go back to uh, the battery uh, to charge. Um, 
and I noticed that you can probably see that that was crushed pretty pretty good so it's kind of good that we're doing this anyways so what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, this wire we're going to take this wire this wire we're going to extend it up to these two yellow wires this red wire is going to come down to here this big thick wire goes straight to your battery uh, the other thing I did is that this is supposed to be grounded to chassis but since this is painted obviously it's not going to ground very well so I just made a, a jumper and uh, put that on there I left these bolts really long just because I'm lazy and it doesn't matter it's under there it's not not doing anything but uh, so anyways this is just a jumper from here down to engine chassis and it's sandwiched in between so that's that's where we're at with that let me go ahead and take these two wires this one and this one and we're gonna hook it to the two yellow wires and then the red wire comes down to here so let me do that and I'll get back with you okay so I kind of got everything kind of buttoned up I, I still want to put some more hoses on here uh, some newer hoses um, but this I just snipped this soldered this wire comes down around into this lug right here so that's basically hooked up straight to the battery um, this one here I put a, a connector on there so if I ever need to disconnect it for whatever reason unplug that and that goes to the uh, two wires that's coming out from behind the flywheel. All right, sorry, battery died. Um, so I went ahead and kind of welded these on. I just plopped that on there. Nothing, nothing special. Just to keep them from turning whenever you're tightening the, the bolts down. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and install this now. And then we'll put the motor on it. Put that belt on there. See if we can tighten everything up. And maybe uh, I gotta do the, the throttle. We gotta put that in there. So I'll do that while it's out. Cause good. I'll go ahead and install that. I'll do this while it's out because it's gonna be a lot easier to do it here than inside there. Okay, so this is the original throttle rod, I guess you can see. Um, bent it at a 90, brought it up to about how far I think I need it. Bent it at another 90. Um, that was the first 90 that I bent and that was wrong so straightened it out um, Here's what I made here So this was just a An actual bolt um, I think it's a 5 16 bolt turned it down um, Threaded a number four Standard I think it was a 440 thread pitch so I could put it in the 440 bolt and so drill a hole in it so the shroud will stick through that hole and then I'll just tighten this that will um, sandwich the throttle rod keep it from moving and then I turned a little groove on the outside so I can put a little e-clip on there I don't I don't know how much you'll be able to see my hands might be in the way but put that in there first Here's a little e-clip. I don't know if it'll show, but that's what it is. There we go. So that'll allow this to kind of move around where it needs to. Uh, if it needs to. And then I'm going to tighten this bottom up. This is the original uh, return spring, so 
whenever we're not giving it any kind of throttle or whatever, we kind of want it to just uh, go back to idle. So when you pull this lever, uh, this is more like for a go-kart, not really for this application, but I did want to have it uh, go back to idle if spring broke or a throttle linkage broke or something like that. Um, so I just bent that spring, put it underneath that bolt there. Uh, I did have to adjust this all the way in so that that gives me my throttle stop for full throttle and then idle. Um, I think next I need to drill a hole in this and that's where I'm going to attach the original um, throttle. But at this point I'm just going to put it in and I might drill the hole. I don't know what I'll do. But anyway, I just want to kind of show you how, how I did that. Um, yeah, so let me uh, let me put this back in. And next thing is I'll put it in in here. Um, so with this plate, it's still adjustable, so I, we can tighten that belt and put it on there. Tighten the belt. So, all right, let's do that. Okay, so I'm going to drain out the uh, the tank and. Uh, this is already dirty, so you don't really be able to tell how bad it is, but you should be able to see on the hose here. So. Actually, that don't look bad at all. Alright guys, here's where we're at with this. Um, Went ahead and tightened all the bolts down. I actually had, it, I guess whenever I was welding it, I kind of figured, but the little studs were, I guess, a little off and didn't fit on there all that easily. But so I took the whole plate out and everything, put it on outside of the, the Bobcat and then um, just stabbed it all back in there. Hey, it worked. I do have the belt tightened down, uh, so that should be good. Uh, what else? I uh, still need to... As far as the wiring goes, I think I have all the wiring good. Um, again, just for now and for testing purposes and all that stuff. Um, I need longer cables. And then this we will actually mount uh, probably inside the cab. Um, or maybe right under here somewhere which would be kind of right under your feet hadn't made up, made up my mind on that uh, what else um, yeah so my jump starters they kept dying and for whatever reason this is putting a load on the engine without pulling the handles back or with the feet pedal so I don't know why there, there's some kind of load that's on the system somewhere which is making this hard to crank which is also making the battery jump starters die pretty quick so fuel pump isn't working either uh, like it should and I, I kind of want to think it's more the carburetor so maybe I took something off and I didn't realize it or whatever but we have like 5 PSI coming out of the crankcase so that's good um, whenever I took this side of it off um, I think it uh, I think it was cranking pretty good or shooting up so and I did make sure that I have that on this time the uh, the fuel shut off so I gotta tweak a few more things um, again here's a just a little bit of a bend to that and we'll put that on there and then we'll have the full throttle all that stuff but I'm gonna leave y'all off with this uh, it is supposed to rain pretty much all next week so I won't be able to touch this for a while so I gotta put up all my all my tools and everything I was getting so close I got pretty excited about it but it is what it is so 
maybe do a little bit more research and all that but all right thanks for watching y'all comment right we'll talk to you later see ya all right guys so i, I kind of got it running um i think one of my problems is that these hoses are leaking and so it's sucking in air instead of um well instead of making a vacuum and sucking in uh, the fuel but got everything kind of hooked up and the other thing was i'm only getting like seven volts coming out of this thing so i obviously hooked up something wrong so as far as i know everything's connected like it should be uh, so i had to double check that um, but as you can see i did get it to move i got the bucket up dump the water out and I got the arms up as well so let's see what we can do it does take a second for the fuel to pump up through here because like I said I got those air leaks so I'm thinking I might do like one of those little um, boat bulb pumps kind of thing I think uh, I think that'll work so before I start it up just come back and that should get it going because once it's once it's going it, it runs pretty good so let's see if it'll start of course it's not going to start now uh, and I'm doing this on my phone so hang on we'll end this here i didn't want to end on a bad note so thanks for watching we got to do a little bit of fine tuning uh we got to relocate the battery uh, do the wiring figure out why i'm only getting seven volts and redo the uh the fuel so all right thanks for watching we'll catch you later see ya a word to the wise whenever you're welding yeah the sparks like the fray so yeah that's a uh, kind of tender you can see the singed hair awesome all right um, um i do have the bite the belt tight mm, good lord